Hello. I was hoping that some of us would be so tired from yesterday that we would sleep in today so I wouldn't have to talk to as many people. But I'm Isabella Marin, as, as they said, and I'm from the US. I have vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, like many of you here. And I was diagnosed when I was 10. With it, I was diagnosed with a breathing disorder first, with von Willenbrand's disease. And my mom kind of kept insisting that something else was wrong with me. And when I was 10, I fell down a fence, like I slid down it, and my knee tore open and I needed stitches and I just wasn't normal. So she talked to my doctor again and he tested me and it came back positive for VEDS. And they retested me and I also have von Willebrand's disease. Um, Jared asked me to speak today and I agreed because I get to talk about myself for 20 minutes and so you guys get to hear all about me. And I put pictures to kind of supplement my little spiel. So one of my first big accomplishments was my high school graduation. Uh, this is a picture of me and my family. This was in 2012. And then naturally we went to Disney World after as a reward for working hard throughout high school. And then I started my first year at college at the University of Texas at El Paso. Um, through there, I have worked at a job for 12 hours every week. I was a teacher's assistant, and I helped the professor grade. I helped the freshmen kind of adjust to living on campus. Um, I've been involved in many organizations, so the picture on your left, uh, that was a picture for a magazine that we took at the university through one of the organizations that I was involved in. And then the right is just, they had a bunch of fun things on campus all the time. So we just took a picture with that. And then I joined the, the liberal arts honors program. So my, my major is in psychology and the, it was in the College of Liberal Arts. So I joined, it's a pretty prestigious program. We do our own research and we take extra, well not extra classes, but we take classes to, to earn an honors minor. <laughs> So in addition to our degree, we also get an honors minor. And this is my induction ceremony. And then I also had the chance to study abroad. So I went for two weeks and my mom was a wreck since sending me over here by myself with VEDS. She couldn't handle it. But as you can see from the pictures, I, I had a nice time. and. We went to um, London, Paris, and Rome, and Pisa, but I didn't include that picture. And here's a picture of me in December when I was presenting my research. I was seeing if, um, if ethnic pride predicts emotional health in people. And so this is something that I worked on for a, a whole year and uh, I'm under the guidance of a mentor. So it was kind of my baby, so I'm very proud of it. I had to include it in here. And then this was at our award ceremony. I won multiple awards, um, mostly for research. And uh, that's just a picture of me, my mom, and my brother. And then this is finally the graduation picture that I took. And he was the grand marshal of the ceremony. So out of all the faculty and staff on campus that were leading the procession, we got to take a picture with him. So he's kind of a big deal. But despite all these accomplishments, it wasn't always an easy road to get to where I am. Um, before I get to this picture, uh, my high school graduation was kind of hard to get to because I had my first bowel obstruction and I had to have emergency surgery for it. So I missed a whole month of school. And my professors and my teachers luckily worked with me, the school worked with me to miss so much school. And I was still able to graduate top 10% in high school. So I was able to wear that nice white gown and everybody else had to wear the blue gown. So it was kind of a cool experience despite having to miss so much school. And then I missed a lot because of my chronic fatigue. Sometimes it was just hard to get up in the morning and I couldn't go, go to school at all. Or I, you know, my immune system was weak and I, I just couldn't go to school. So that, that's why high school was such a big accomplishment for me. And then my first year of university, uh, I had another bowel obstruction from scar tissue from the first bowel obstruction. So the first one, I had to remove a piece of my intestine. And this one was the scar tissue from the first one. And I missed 
two weeks. I don't, I don't know if any of you have went to college, but missing two weeks of college is a lot. And luckily Thanksgiving break was the week after, so I was out for three weeks. But my professors worked with me then as well. And then all throughout college, I've had a lot of health issues. Um, of course, dealing with fatigue all the time. I also went dancing one time and I got a I got hit in the head and I had a brain contusion so I had to miss a little bit of school with that too because I couldn't really deal with the bright lights and all the people and I couldn't focus. Um, and at last, in 2015, in November, I started dealing with a calf muscle tear. Uh, again, I was out dancing. Everybody tells me I should stop dancing and uh, it tore. Uh, when I was out with my friends and I went home and I thought maybe I had just strained it and we were concerned for a blood clot because of my bleeding disorder. So we went to the hospital, there was no blood clot but they said that my muscle was torn. So that's been since 2015 and as you guys can see I'm still in my boot. So almost two years. Um, it's been hard, especially because I couldn't really move, I couldn't use my leg, you don't really know how much you need parts of your body until they're not working for you. And it's been a struggle. My campus is uh, full of hills. It's not flat at all. So I couldn't really use crutches because they'd rupture the vessels in my hands. And then I had to find someone to push me in the wheelchair everywhere. And of course, they were getting a workout going uphill everywhere. And um, it was hard. And I did have to quit working for a little bit. and. Finally, it, it's getting better. They threw the boot on me. But it's been a real hard journey um, dealing with all of this and trying to go to school and work and doing research. And I know vets can be very life limiting. And that's why I'm telling my story today because vets may get tough, but we're all tougher. And I don't think that we should let it limit us in our lives. We should continue to push for to do what we want to do. I just, I graduated in December and then I'm starting nursing school. I started nursing school this past spring. And when I had called to see if I can get later classes because I wasn't moving and I just had more fatigue since I've just been laying around all the time because of my leg, they, they called me and they wanted to make sure that I was serious about this. Like we only take we take our spots in the program very seriously and if you can't handle it, basically discouraging me to, to join the program. And at first I was kind of down about it and I was like, I don't know if I'll be able to handle this. It's very demanding. Um, like I already get fatigued enough just going to and from class. How am I supposed to go to clinicals and take care of patients if I can barely take care of myself? But it's something that I really want to do and I want to give back to people like how I've been helped in the hospital. So I want to show that lady that I can do it. And I've been lucky to have a, a support system. And there's a lot of accommodations and resources out there for everybody. Um, I know we don't, a lot of us don't like to ask for help, but it's out there. A lot of times I don't even bother asking because I feel like there's nothing that can be done to help me. But there, there's a ton of resources. That school, they have accommodations for me for my classes. So. If I need to miss class, my professors understand and I just send them an email and they'll know. Um, even like going to concerts and everything, I, I was kind of discouraged going in the wheelchair because I was like, I'm not going to be able to see, like it's going to be crowded, but there's combination. If you just talk to people, they'll work with you. And that's something that I've really learned. So don't let VEDS get you down and kind of ask around for help. There's people out there that are willing to, to help and, and lend us a hand. Um, this is a picture of me in my wheelchair. And I, I gave a talk at the university about invisible illness and, um, and going to college. And I kind of talked about how our chronic fatigue is just a pain. That I just I described it as a mountain that we have to climb every day, and you know we have to decide whether or not the mountain is worth climbing that day. So should we stay in bed? Should we climb the mountain and not do anything for two days? And I just talked about how a lot of the world is not really that accessible. So they're trying to to make the campus more open 
to all kinds of people who, who need the access. And then there are perks to, to living with a disability. Um, this is at one of my doctor appointments in the hospital, and they had previous um, American football coaches and players come and they signed footballs, and I got to wear a Super Bowl ring, which was pretty big. I don't know if you guys can see it from there. But, so it's kind of cool, we do get perks, right? Here and there, so there's a bright side to, to living with a disability. And then this is a picture of me at graduation. So I was selected to be the, the banner bearer. So I got to hold this really huge banner and lead the faculty and all the students into the ceremony. And I, again, I didn't want to apply because I was like, how am I gonna carry a banner when I'm in a wheelchair? But they, they really worked with me. I had asked them and they had someone push me the whole time. They had, I was the first to, one of the first to graduate. And it was just a really, overwhelming and awesome experience and then um, I I'm happy and I, honestly I think it's I'm more happy that I was in a wheelchair than carrying it just like this because I probably would have passed out holding it for so long so I was able to at least set it on the wheelchair and and hold on to it but I chose this picture to end my talk because I hope it gives you all inspiration and to continue um, going for what you want to go for and doing everything that you want to do. So, thank you.